Welcome to Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus, Halloween week. And what's the trick or treat? The Washington Redskins are in first place. We got a ghoulie of a show for you. We will be right back. <laughs> I wish you weren't so worried about moving. I'm hoping these nature sounds will help me relax a bit. At least we don't have to worry about homeowner's insurance. Just call Geico. Geico helps with homeowner's insurance? Good to know. Feeling better. I love you, Pookie Bear. 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 Get to know Geico and see how easy homeowners and renters insurance can be. since I broke one, you know, and the guys just say, keep hitting, keep hitting it, eventually we'll get one, but it felt good to break through and, you know, just to come back and refocus, you know, that's what we talk about throughout the week and, you know, before the game, overcoming ad adversity, you know, so for me, it was about just locking in, letting that play go and not letting it uh, affect the next play. We talk about finishing and, um, you know, that's a, that's a big key, you know, like I said, we We've talked about all week about, you know, not being able to score in the second half. Mm -hmm. And so being able to get a big touchdown like that. And we had moments all, all game where we could have, you know, uh, we should have capitalized and, uh, and we didn't. So be able to finish off like that. And then, uh, you know, you always want to end the game with the offense, with the offense on the field, on a victory formation. Right. Um, especially when it comes to a conference game, you know. Um, so being able to do that today, um, it, was, it was a great feeling for us. Welcome back to the show. Let's talk a little offense now. Adrian Peterson, 149 yards rushing, leader of the team, making things happen. But will tell me one thing. Offensive line, good on the run block, not so good on the pass protection. Gee, what's happening to those old linemen? Thanks, Tony. Great question. But I think the offensive line is doing a great job of run blocking. That's why um, Peterson is doing so well in the run game. But the passing game, I think it's a communication problem. you got to communicate with one another, help each other coming off each block and supporting one another. And not, But they're going to be fine. At the end of the day, they're going to be fine. Now that we're on the offense, let's continue to talk about them. You look at it, Mike and Donna, and y'all tell me, this offense right now is not clicking on all cylinders. But one thing that's happened, we got a good running game, maybe not the best practice, pass protection, but then at the same time, wide receivers are starting to show up a little bit and they're going back to the big tight end. Is this the formula? You know, Tony, Gary is still acting up today, but it's not so much about forcing the issue in getting the tight ends involved in the offense. Because I think at this point with the passing game, you've got to get everybody involved because that's an area that the Redskins need to improve on. Uh, so I think that once they get everybody in this, according to what the team is uh, giving them, you got Jordan Reed with one catch and then um, Vernon Davis with one catch, I think, this week. So I was loving the fact that they got Josh Dotson involved, five catches, which was a career high, and I was so happy to hear that name. I got to tell you, Tony, you ask about tight ends, the Washington Redskins are abysmal. Abysmal. They don't hit their tight ends. you got Jordan Reed. He's just going to leave because he doesn't like it anymore. I'll tell you what. You want to see a tight end this week, you study Matt Ryan and you study Austin Hooper. Third year, one of the best tight ends in the game, and Matt goes to him all the time. In fact, he's going to have about four or 500 yards by this game. You watch that kid and you learn how to do it, Jay. This is how you do it. Watch that kid. You know, my last question I want to ask you guys about the offense, and I know we've been on them for a while, is 
what did this office need to do to beat this Atlanta team? Now, one thing I do know about the Atlanta team, they have five injured starters on defense and two of them are all-stars. They should be able to run the ball on this team and throw it. Which one do you go towards more? If it were I, Adam, I would run the ball. What would you do? Well, Tony, this offense has to find ways to score touchdowns in the red zone. You can't come away with field goals anymore. back we got to get on to Atlanta um, you know we, we, we supposed to win this game you know we supposed to be the team that's one and seven we're supposed to blow them out truthfully uh, but you know we got the W that's all that matters when we go when we come in next week you know we, it's all focus we're we not happy we're not you know we, it's all focus man it need to be all focus attention to details we still haven't did nothing around here you know we, we lead them but we, we haven't won the division we haven't won the championship we haven't won the Super Bowl so there's no room for for lack, lack of days ago, there's no room to come around thinking like we did something. We didn't did nothing yet. You know, we just getting started. We just, we just putting, we just putting, the, turning the stove on. Man. We ain't even put the grease in yet. Yeah. You can kind of set a tone defensively. Yeah. What do you think that? Uh, I mean, it definitely, you know, it shot them away from the run game. They had to go to different stuff, and it was stuff that we were ready for. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we knew that uh, we want to, if we could stop them with a light box, you know, we, we, it was going to be tough for them. So yeah. me and ZB and, you know, the front, yeah. Preston, all them guys, we took it upon ourselves, man. We we're going to be physical and yeah. try to knock it out early and make them go to something else. So, you know, I'm proud of everybody because that's the way we play, you know, just mm -hmm. being physical. They're going to have to beat us another way. Right. And getting rushed without having to. Yep, four-man rush, yeah. yep. So if we could do that and keep two high safeties, man, we knew we had a, a good chance to contain those big play receivers they had. As you can see, I put my knowledge head on because we're talking a little defense. One thing I do know, this defense is playing well. They're ranked high, pretty high, I guess, in the NFL. Scoring defense, they're good. Finally, the pass rushers on the edge got to pass rushing the way they should. So now, where did this defense go? What do they need to do to prepare to get better each and every game? You know, Tony, I like what the defense is doing right now because they're adjusting to whatever team they're playing. They were able to set, shut down two running backs, Elliott and then Barkley, last week. And they, they did it with a 4-3 defense. Mike always talks about going back to a 4-3 defense. They actually are almost playing a 4-3 defense. They did against the Giants. They used a soft box, two high safeties to take away those big receivers. So... They are actually adjusting, so I think they just need to keep doing what they're doing because the defense actually is playing great. Yeah, well, Tony, I think, again, offensive line needs to talk a little bit better in the passing game so they can sit there and support, make sure Alex has time to get the ball off to the receivers and go a little bit more vertical down the field. We do a lot coming across and back and forth, but do a little bit more vertical down the field, score some more points, and we're going to give a, it's going to be very hard to beat us then. Adam, what do you think? 
Well, I'll say this. The Redskins do not beat themselves offensively, Alex Smith in particular. But like Gary said, you do have to take some shots down the field. The other thing you have to find a way to do that they did against the Giants is rush the passer. Matt Ryan is very potent offensively and if you give him time to throw the ball. And Julio Jones, you've got to find a way to contain him. Better, better than Eli, mm -hmm. Matt Ryan is. Now, Mike, you could tell me this. This defense is getting better. They had some defensive backs out in the last game, and they still played fairly well. They did give up some big plays. But what facet of this defense do you think has improved the greatest, and what facet going forward need to improve if they're going to the playoffs? Tony, the pumpkin and I have the ultimate answer. Quinton, we are praying for you, sir. You've got the shin. Come back this week, Quinton Dunbar. The Washington Redskins need you because you're getting ready to face three of the best receivers in the game, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, and Mahmoud Sanu. We need you, Quinton. Come back. Come back. Greg Stroman's okay, but we need you, Quinton Dunbar. And on the other hand, the two guards are out for the season for Atlanta. You can just do anything you want. That's all I have to say. What do you think? Now, Mike, there was a rhetorical question because I knew what answer you should have given. If you got any knowledge of defense whatsoever, those two big defensive tackles, are they're balling. That's what you call it. I call them the Bucks. I call them the Connection. But those two guys have made such a difference in this defense. Now, if there's anyone else you think can make that big of a difference, tell me. So you just walk around telling people Geico could help them save money on car insurance? Yeah, that and homeowners, renters, motorcycle and boat insurance. Huh, that's nice. What happens when you catch a fish? Oh! Geico, more than just car insurance. See how much you could save at geico.com. I'm okay! I'm wearing this mask because special teams have been ugly at times this year. But for the last two weeks, this team's are really playing well. Tell me, can this team turn it around and be an every week contributor for this team to win the division? Tell me now, I need to know. Yeah, Tony, every phase of this team is so important, including special teams. I think field position is so key. And I guess the Giants, I think their coverage team has to be a little bit better. And then, like I said, field position is everything on special teams. And I'm not going to mention nothing about H-O-P-K, I-N-S. <laughs> you shouldn't. You what? missed that easy field goal. <laughs> he made a big one, though. <laughs> yes, he did. You give him credit where credit's due. Tressway was terrific after getting hurt in the game against the Giants. So hopefully he'll be okay against Atlanta. Yeah, in the last two games, eight inside at the 20-yard line. Very impressive. Now, you know i got to call out some guys. These guys have been so outstanding the last three weeks. Let's go through them. Sean Dion Hamilton, give him a hand. <laughs> Danny Johnson, give him a hand. <laughs> Adonis Alexander, give him a hand. And Kenny Ladler, who they really like as a safety. Give him a hand. 
This special teams unit, it's going to be one of the more outstanding ones in the league by the end of the season when they go to the playoffs, Tony. That's all I have to say. What do you have to say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and now New Faces with Adam Batachi. Welcome to New Faces. In this week's segment, we talk about Redskins linebacker Pernell McPhee. Originally from Orlando, Florida, McPhee was drafted by the Ravens in 2011. After winning a Super Bowl with the Ravens in the 2012 season, McPhee joined the Bears for two seasons. Look for him to have a good season this year with the Redskins on special teams. What do you mean it's not working out, Craig? I mean, I just introduced you to my parents. Psst, Craig and Sheila broke up. What? Really? Craig and Sheila broke up? No. Craig and Sheila what happened? Broke up. I don't know. Is she okay? I never liked my parents. Oh, that was her. Craig and Sheila broke up. Craig and Sheila. <laughs> As long as office gossip travels fast, you can count on Geico saving folks money. Frank and Sheila broke up. What? 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hey, sports fans. Two-time Super Bowl champion Gary Clark and Pacific Dental Services have joined up to bring Redskin fans a chance to win free NFL legend experiences. Go to www.garyclarkinc.com forward slash fans to register for a chance to win. Good luck. Welcome to the Sports Bar Challenge. In this week's game, we have the New England Patriots hosting the Green Bay Packers in Foxborough on Sunday Night Football. Crystal City Restaurant likes the Patriots. Crystal City Sports Pub likes the Patriots. Greavies likes the Patriots. Hard Times Cafe of Fairfax likes the Patriots. Harry's Ale House in Fredericksburg likes the Patriots. And Nando's Peri Peri Chicken likes New England. Look for this to be a high-scoring game between the two best quarterbacks in football, but I like New England at home. Pick the Patriots. Hey, this is Gary Clark here at MetLife Stadium. The Redskins get ready to take on the Giants. We're here with one of our special fans of the week. This is Matt with Enterprise Holding. He's a rock star. He's going to tell us a little bit about what he thinks is going to happen today. Well, I, I, I honestly think that this is one of those games where in the past we might have shown up and not shown up, if you know what I mean. But today we're going to take care of business in MetLife Stadium. We're going to make them 1-7. Rockstar here. I'm calling this the showdown game. Two of the best teams in the NFL will face off this week when the Los Angeles Rams take their 8-0 record on the road to face the 6-1 New Orleans Saints. Now both of these teams are coming off impressive wins. The Rams over the Packers and the Saints over the Vikings. Now these two teams are similar in so many ways. Both have good running games. The round with Todd Gurley and the Saints with both Kamar and Ingrid. Now, both of these teams have good passing attacks, and both have quarterbacks that are having exceptional years. Now, this game is probably going to come down to coaching, the two Shans going up against each other. So on the road this week, the 8-0 Rams, they will get their first loss. Pick the Saints. We have Green Bay traveling to New England. We got two of the best quarterbacks in NFL history going up against one another. It is definitely going to be a war. But when you have a war, you can only have one winner. And at the end of the day, you never bet against Brady. Take New England to win because, again, you just never bet against Brady. Yes, I used to be the Minister of Information. That was last week. But today I'm the doctor of picks. I got a game that you need to look at. I'm looking at Pittsburgh going to Baltimore. Both teams, when you talk about them, you talk about heart. They both got heart. But at the same time, when the heart is gone, it takes talent. And Pittsburgh have more talent. So if you want to win, go with Big Ben. Pick Pittsburgh. This week's on What's Bugging You in the NFL, presented to you by Gary Clark Incorporated, we have one person who's one of the smartest NFL fans I've ever met in my life. Let's go to Maddie. Hi, my name is Maddie Matthews, and I'm a sixth grade Redskins fan. What's bugging me this NFL season is that treats like ice cream and hot dogs are too expensive for my wall at NFL stadiums. That's what's bugging me. Let's go Skins! This is our fourth annual uh, partnering with you, Donna Hopkins, the uh, throwdown for the cause. In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, together we fight. Together we become one for those impacted by breast cancer. It was my annual pink ribbon throwdown in conjunction with CrossFit of Laurel's Health and Fitness Expo. Throwing down for the cause. We had a little bit of something for everyone. 
I have family members that been that dealt with it before. I have family members that passed away, but you know, like I said, anything you can do to get out, just get some exercise. today? Well, it was surprisingly, it was hard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> usually I'm at a pace where, you know, I go in, I lift weights, or I jog at my own pace, stuff like that. But, you know, this is where, you know, you got to get so many reps in. Well, you try to get so many reps in within a short period of time. So it was challenging, but it was fun. Tell me a little bit about what we were doing today. So today we started, um, we had the amazing Mocha Lee kicked off the event with a yoga Pilates class. After that, uh, we kind of kicked it up. Coach Marie jumped in and put everybody that was attending through one of our boot camps. And then the third, we kind of wrapped it up. It's kind of a, um, a, a long-standing tradition at CrossFit Laurel that we've kind of incorporated with um, Donna Hopkins, a throwdown, and a throwdown for the cause. And that's a CrossFit workout called Grace, which is 30 clean and jerks for time. It's the slogan. Throwing down for the cause. Together we fight. Tony, good news. The Redskin Magazine Inc. Minority Scholarship Contest is back again this year. And we're encouraging all seniors to submit essays on the subject. Do you think the Voting Rights Act of 1965 impacts your rights today? Why or why not? And you can submit your essays to redmagplus.com. Once on the website, you go to Youth Sideline. That gives you all the instructions on the essay, how to submit it. And all we can say is they're great prizes. So best of luck to all the writers out there. I was in the lead in the picks. You messed with my head. Or did I mess with yours? <laughs> anyway, picks this week, Tony. Pittsburgh at Baltimore. Tony's picking Pittsburgh. Don is picking Baltimore. Gary's picking Pittsburgh. Mike's picking Pittsburgh. LA Chargers at Seattle. Everybody's picking Seattle but Pumpkin. Pumpkin, you want the Chargers? OK, I'll take the Chargers. LA Rams at New Orleans. Tony's picking Rams, Donna's picking New Orleans, Gary's picking Rams, Mike, New Orleans. Yes, of course, after seeing Drew Brees, no one can ever pick against him. After all, what team in the NFL starts three quarterbacks on a play? I mean, really. Then we have Green Bay at New England, Tony's picking New England, Donna's picking New England, Gary's picking New England, Mike, do we want to switch? No, stay with New England. Okay. Detroit at Minnesota, 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 Minnesota. Oh. I don't miss Kirk Cousins. <gasps> anyway, so let's talk a little bit about the NFC East. Are the Eagles toast? Are the Giants toast? Are the Cowboys toast? Are they all toast? There's only really one prime white bread 
in this league that you can make a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich out of, right, Adam? That's and right. that's the Washington Redskins. That's correct. They're in first place. They're among those teams you mentioned. They're best in turnover margin, and they win football games. That's why you never eat peanut butter and put it with jelly, because your mouth get all messed up. Yes, that's this true. This is too early to be saying that the Redskins are going to just fly through this division, because I think the Eagles made a statement with their win, but I think the Giants are kind of like done, and Dallas, they just got their, their new receiver. So I think it's too early to be crowning the Redskins, but I do like where they are. They're toast. Those crown other teams them. are toast. Go ahead and crown them. You can go ahead and crown them. Yeah. We're winning the East this year. We're the beast in the East, and we're going to keep it that way. You know, how do you feel about all the analysts in the NFL saying that DJ Swearinger is the number one safety in the game? How do you I'll feel I'll tell you about what, that? he's proven it each and every week. He comes out, and people have doubts, and then he takes those doubters and makes those believers. So he's he's playing great. you got to love the intensity that he brings, the excitement that he brings. He's a... He's a team leader on this team right now, and he's showing it. Yeah, I do, I do like him. i got to jump in on him right now because he leads the NFL in interceptions with four. But the reason why I like him is this is the first year he talked about this as being in a system for two years. And it's starting to show because he had been with five different coaches, five different defenses. So now being in this defense for two years, his, as he said, his God-given abilities is starting to show. Everybody was talking about the leaders on this team. Finally, it's more than just D.J. Swearinger on the defense. It's uh, Allen as far as up front on the defense. You can kind of like pick a couple of people that have stepped forward and are leaders on that defense now. Matt Ioannidis is another name. Uh, so, and, of course, Deron Payne, the rookie, has been fantastic. But I'll throw one other thing out there. If this team finishes 6-3 and three the rest of the way, just 6-3, and three, they will win 11 games for the first time since Gary's 1991 team that won the Super Bowl. It's been that long. Wow. That it's can hard. happen. They missed me for a long time. Yeah, they did. Just goes now, Carson back. Wentz is I playing don't know better. Why. He really is. <laughs> They're playing better. They, not only that, they had to send him overseas so he could play better. Now he's playing better. Do we fear the Eagles since we have to face them twice in the month of December? No. I, I would respect them, not fear them. Mm-mm. All right, let's talk. We've got one minute left. The best teams in the NFL. Can the Washington Redskins ever compete with the likes of Kansas City? Can they compete with a New England? Can they perhaps compete with someone like the L.A. Rams? Is it even conceivable? It is, yes, but they have to build their offensive line the way they did their defensive line. If you notice, they used all those draft picks to improve their defensive line, and now it's elite. Do the same thing with your offensive line, and you got a chance. Don't leave the Saints out because you left them out, and they're one of those teams. But I think the Redskins, if they play their type of ball, and I think they're going to get better along the way, they can really contend with anybody. Why would you be in the league if you don't think you can contend with everybody? Right. You know, Why be a team? If you just go fold it up and go home, of course they can. All right, we got 30 seconds. What do you need to do to beat Atlanta? Pressure Matt Ryan for sure. Pressure Matt, pressure Matt Ryan. All three phases have to come to play. Okay. Ditto. All right. Well, folks, the Atlanta Falcons have only gained over 100 yards in one game this season, and they ran it against Carolina, and we all know you can run against them. All you got to do is shut down their receivers, and you'll have a big day. Tony? Well, we've had fun doing the show today, but we want to have fun next week when we come back and say the Washington Redskins, number one, and they dogged Atlanta. Until that time, as always, in the minute. Ha, 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 ha.